Uh, further into that, okay, differences. Uh, so alloy, as I mentioned, is a mixture of two or more metallic components with other elements. Composites is a mixture of non-metallic components except MMC, the metal matrix composites. Always have at least one metal elements when it has to be qualified as alloy. But uh, in composite, not required. But uh, in MMC, at least matrix is a uh, uh, metal. Can be either homogeneous or heterogeneous alloys. Okay, but alloys normally we say homogeneous. But some cases like a functionally graded material or or some such material which becomes heterogeneous and also we call metallic materials are isotropic. The properties are same in all directions. Okay. But uh, in composite, it's always heterogeneous because you combine different materials. You will have a matrix different, my uh, fiber difference or reinforcement difference. So properties are not same in all directions. Have a luster due to presence of metal. So alloy or metal, you know that no that uh, the shiny finish luster that's always there in any metal. But gold is has a highest luster. But you see the ca uh, carbon or cast iron has very less luster, but it will have luster. But uh, composite material doesn't have luster. Okay, and alloy most can conduct electricity. Uh, invariably, metallic uh, bond or ionic bond it will have, and it will conduct electricity. But in composite, normally they don't conduct electricity except MMC. So why MMC conduct electricity? Because the matrix is metallic. There. Uh, quickly, we'll see types and applications. So polymer matrix composites, we normally call them as PMCs. So most common and also known as FRP, fiber reinforced plastics. These materials use a polymer based resin as a matrix and a variety of fibers such as glass, carbon, aramid as the reinforcement. So that main constituents are matrix and fibers or reinforcements and matrix is normally epoxy. Um, or polymer based matrix okay like it may be thermoset thermoplastic or bismaldehyde so like different resins you can use and the different uh, reinforcement as fibers mainly the glass or carbon or aramid coming to mmcs increasingly found in the automotive industry these materials use a metal such as aluminum as, a, as the matrix and a reinforce it with fibers such as silicon carbide. Okay, silicon carbide has high strength, stiffness, uh, sorry, high strength and uh, stiffness. And a matrix is an aluminum matrix, aluminum metal matrix uh, or aluminum alloy matrix. So this is where uh, they, they get some high temperature capability to some extent and uh, they get uh, extensive used in automobile industry like connecting rods, engine blocks and all. A uh, ceramic matrix composite. This is like a uh, uh, recent, like we saw composites are there, uh, started coming into picture last 30 years, but CMCs uh, uh, were in picture for last 20 years or so, but the applications and uh, um, exploration on CMCs becoming more and more for last 10 years or so, especially in gas turbine engines or uh, aircraft engines where this uh, matrix, ceramic matrix composites has very high temperature capability. Okay, and these materials use a ceramic as a matrix and reinforcement okay both ceramic uh, matrix and ceramic reinforcement that is the point to be noted so in ceramic matrix composite both matrix and uh, reinforcement are ceramics and they may be short fibers or whiskers uh, and these are made from silicon carbide or boron nitride five fibers these are ceramics and also matrix can be silicon or boron nitride itself but the matrix what we make and uh, reinforcement we make there are different methods and techniques to make that okay uh, then we we'll li little more see into PMCs, uh, fiber reinforced plastic composites, uh, polymer matrix composites. Okay, so these are uh, uh, today nowadays uh, used extensively in aerospace applications. Uh, so be it uh, uh, aircraft or fighter planes or. Um, space launch systems or as i was telling the upcoming flying cars or small uh, five seater seven seater aircraft and all helicopters everywhere the pmcs are extensively used okay and fiber reinforced composites are composed of fibers and matrix as i explained earlier fibers are the reinforcement and main source of strength they carry the load matrix glues all the fibers together in shape and transfer stresses between reinforcing fibers okay and um, they also as i mentioned they binds the fibers together and they protect the fibers from environmental damage okay so these are some additional roles of uh, matrix sometimes fillers or modified fibers uh, 
might be added to smooth manufacturing process impart special properties and a reduced cost so these are again uh, you you should not think that oh it's the only matrix and fibers or reinforcement no we we add lot of different materials even for matrix or even for fibers okay when they individually manufacture or when they getting combined so we had very many more supplementary materials to that so that we get that advantages of and properties so polymer uh, matrix composites uh, again fiber reinforced uh, plastic composites frpc um, so they little more onto the properties the properties of the composites are determined by the properties of the fiber the properties of the resin because these two becomes a constituent of the end composite the ratio of fiber to resin in the composite that also gives you a, how the end properties are derived okay we call it fiber volume fraction okay so the how much amount of uh, resin you use how much amount of reinforcement you use the geometry and orientation of the fibers in the composite yes again how you orient those fibers in the matrix okay and make the end composite like it is an unidirectional quasi isotropic or bidirectional or haphazardal manner you reinforce those fibers that gives you the end property so these four factors derives the end properties of the composite okay this is just an illustration of a polymer compo mat uh, matrix composite see the properties comparison here if you take tensile versus strain if it is only resin it has very minimal uh tensile proper uh, properties but little higher uh, strain okay strain capability but if you take fiber it is very high tensile properties but very less ductility but when you combine two together you get an optimized properties okay there where that is the advantage of composites yeah? because you can't use resin as such you can't use only fiber but when you combine two together you get that optimal properties then coming to mmcs metal matrix composites okay mmcs are usually consists of a low density metal as a matrix it may be as aluminum or magnesium and it gets reinforced with a particulate or fiber as a ceramic material such as silicon carbide or graphite okay so they their silicon carbide or graphite become the uh, load bearing members of that composites and uh, metal uh, or alloy of aluminum or magnesium becomes a matrix compared with the unreinforced metals then you can ask why like, okay as a aluminum or as a magnesium or as a titanium we have all the properties required why you want to have a metallic uh, matrix composite okay but why because compared with the unreinforced metals mmcs offer higher specific strength and stiffness higher operating temperature and greater wear resistance so because of this improved properties we go for mmcs they provide the opportunity to tailor the properties for a particular application okay because if you have a metallic alloy uh, you, you can't tailor that properties it, it is an alloy it has its own properties but when you uh, want to tailor those properties you can make that through an um, mmc metal matrix composite then coming to ceramic matrix composites so i said this is recent fast gaining lot of advantages and lo like lot of a lot of applications and uh, more and more uh, research and developments happening and more and more applications being realized so cmcs are a special type of composite materials in which both the reinforcement and matrix materials are ceramics i told you earlier in some cases the same kind of ceramic is used for both parts of the structure like uh, silicon carbide matrix silicon carbide reinforcement but sometime we change that silicon carbide uh, carbide may be a matrix and some other boron nitride or some some but something else may be the reinforcement okay and additional secondary fibers may also be included like sometime the silicon carbide is the matrix silicon carbide is the reinforcement again we may add boron nitride also as a reinforcement secondary fibers these composites behave much differently from conventional ceramics and are far different from the high performance alloys okay so like we know we have super alloys today they are having good temperature capabilities like with up to 1200 1300 degree we can use but when it comes to the ceramic matrix composites we can use it even for 2000 degree celsius okay that's where the advantage of ceramic matrix composites and that that's where uh, This is the highlight here. Like it is entirely different from any high temperature alloys. 
coming to applications so this is uh, again uh, not not uh, specific composites i am giving here but is an overall so all we saw uh, fiber reinforced composites the pmcs polymer matrix composites ceramic matrix composites then uh, metal matrix composites so polymer matrix composites uh, mainly used in aerospace uh, both commercial military space shuttles launch vehicles and aero engines also we use composites in uh, fan bare uh, fan casing and all then appliances we use composites automobile i said main, main, mainly metal matrix composites and polymer matrix composites in different components wind turbine blades okay so you would have seen uh, wind turbine blades getting transported okay so la large trailer trucks take one blade one blade is of like uh, 20 30 meters long okay so that whole large blade is made out of a glass fiber reinforced composite okay and it becomes very light otherwise imagine a large wing uh, wind turbine bla uh, blade uh, is made out of metallic material imagine the weight but if it is a composite material weight comes down drastically and that gives the better efficiency better transportation better um, uh, construction feasibilities for the wind turbine towers okay and then civil infrastructure and construction so buildings also use composites um, uh, for different uh, construction structures chemical industry uh, mainly for tanks hoods cabinets uh, we use composites electrical so like uh, motor casing uh, or uh, we, we may use it for some some electrical application i said for non conducting uh, insulation okay and electronics electronics also we use composites the miniaturization the miniature uh, uh, chips okay uh, and and again printer circuit boards uh, electronic gears uh, insulation all those things we use composites and marine okay the boat hulls or small boards uh, the, um, the trainer boards okay and and uh, seaplanes and all we use uh, uh, composites and uh, extensively significance of composites so you might have now imagined why composites are gaining more and more advantage um, applications uh, why more and more composite research and developments are happening okay because the composites give bring in lot of significance or lot of advantages so first and foremost most is weight saving is one of the main reasons for using composite materials rather than conventional materials for components composites can have multiple properties not often found in single material so i i mentioned in the previous slides that design flexibility okay so just to give an highlight uh, with aircraft wings okay so if you see all metallic wings are very flat but if you see composite wings they are called swept wings okay that swept uh, uh, configuration the swept shape comes because of this uh, they, they are made out of composite materials okay that's where design flexibility resistance to wide range of chemical agents okay composite like what mat matrix material you use uh, if you need to uh, using that composites in chemical uh, environment and use the chemical reactive resistance material then the composite will have chemical react, uh, resistance there then durability electric insulation and high impaction this is another advantage of using composites okay so we use the sandwich structure and all so they have very high impaction okay so that is the advantage when we come designing a component uh, specifically for impact resistance okay so metal cannot be that impact resistant but composites will have that advantage of impact uh, resistance so current trends in the market so uh, the global composite market grew at 8% over 2010 uh, and then 4% for 2010 to 2019 for the next 5 years this is interesting so it can go up to 9% per uh, annum across regions uh, ex um, expanded due to various advantages of different composite materials increasing their application day by day and also amount of usage is increasing so like uh, they are getting as they getting more and more applications more and more uh, component realized out of composite materials the uh, uh, amount of usage keeps on increasing uh, Continuing on current trends, uh, advanced composites to find more and more scope in various sectors, uh, be it aerospace, automobile, general engineering, construction, wind turbine, renewable energy, electrical, electronics, chemical industry, so more and more applications and high temperature composites to aid supersonic transport. Like we are planning, like we are, uh, people are coming up with the supersonic transport. Okay, you might have heard of it. Okay, earlier it was there Concord, but uh, it stopped later. But now again, people are bringing back the uh, boom 
so avionic boom avionic is bringing supersonic flights okay the, but when these flights go in a supersonic speed the skins of exter external of aircraft get heated because of the air friction though that this high temperature ceramic cmcs will uh, go and play a big role there okay they they will make those components okay and and that's where like uh, 16 18 hours flight like from bangalore to uh, san francisco it is about 18 hours non stop flight today so that can be reduced to 4 hours so imagine how much reduction in the uh, tra trans uh, travel time because of uh, supersonic uh, transport new manufacturing technologies like people are realizing component uh, composite parts using 3d printing also the current trends market continuing so if you come to this is an example for usa composite market thing to 2013 it is about uh, 4000 million dollar uh, usd but you see now it is almost uh, 8000 million dollars okay so this is what the growth is happening for last 10 years or so okay so that's again gives an indication what is there for the composites for uh, next job opportunities so we have varieties of you can get varieties of jobs in uh, composite domain uh, arena so composite structural engineer design engineer stress engineer aerospace engineer manufacturing engineer composite professor like you can even go and teach in uh, some of the universities because most of the universities in the world today have invariably one or the other subjects getting teach teached in uh, relevant to composites they have laboratories in and doing lot of research into composite field and uh, composites quality engineer again no quality reliability i was talking so that becomes important so people who are working in composites they will have composite uh, engineer also and composite technician okay when it comes to manufacturing shop floor even with the with, you need not to have a btech degree to become a composite engineer you can even with the iti or a technical um, the technician degree or diploma you can become a composite engineer uh continuing on the opportunities technical head these are some high end uh, uh, like uh, uh, job opportunities technical head head business development composite manufacturing expert so if you spend some good amount of time in uh, working in composites so you become composite expert design and tooling engineer so when, when you manufacture composite uh, tools or the mm, Uh, the jigs we use that's also important for composites manufacturing so that that that's also one area where we have we need lot of experience expertise there and research scientists so as i said no uh, the three different categories of composites cmcs pmcs mmcs uh, so that each and each of them needs lot of invention lot of research and development so a research scientist in composite field also be, becomes very important uh there are different companies working on composites so it's again gives you a job perspective or what are being done in different uh, um, uh, industries so drdo isro bml dst defense science and technologies iits iscs nits universities all they are into lot of research and development and uh, uh, inventions into the composites and research organizations okay so they again drdo or any other research organization you take so they they are uh, into the um, composites arena then aerospace mnc's take any uh, company airbus boeing bombardier rolls royce ge uh, gkn any companies you take they are all into composites research development manufacturing uh, and applications parts manufacturing uh, design and development everything and again wind sector wind energy element power sudlon vesta so any companies you name they all use extensively composite materials uh, companies okay so those are the companies which do either do research and development or end use of composites but what about composite manufacturing companies so thousands of companies in the world today they manufacture composites like own curing ppg industries certex saint gobain sgl group tenk torre joltec Uh, Torre, Zoltec, Cytec Industries, Dupont, GKN, Hexel Corporation, Huntsman Corporation, KCC Corporation, Mitsubishi Chemical Corporation, Momenti Performance Materials, many, many, much more companies. No, thousands of companies involved in manufacturing of these components. Either they manufacture resins, or they manufacture fibers or reinforcements, or they manufacture final prepregs or final components. Whatever you take, so these companies or many more companies involved in composites. manufacturing so these companies also always look for composite experts composite engineers composite um, interested people okay you need not to be composite so when you start your career in any of these companies you are as good as anybody else you may be 
you fresh graduate but when you start your career there and start gaining experience then you become a composite expert then why to learn more on composites okay be more industry ready and open for job opportunities high potential for more and more engineered applications so we started with engineering materials so there comes you you learn and uh, become uh, knowledgeable in composites area so there you can bring in more 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 and more engineering applications then composite growth market is estimated to be huge so we have seen that okay so from last 10 years it is uh, doubled the composite uh, growth market uh, only in us so imagine worldwide okay so there's a huge um, uh, requirement and huge potential so new technologies as i said no flying cars drones lightweight vehicles so all need composite material or the an aero engine so more and more you come up with cmcs or advanced cmcs that is advantages for aerospace uh, applications aero engine application or you come up with a more and more functionally graded material or a uh, composite material which can harvest energy or which can generate energy so that is uh, key for any uh, upcoming applications and again as i mentioned renewable will our energy kite so there are uh, uh, inventions where you you fly a kite and it because of that wind energy it generates electricity okay so how how lighter we, you make that kite that is more advantages okay so that gives an advantage for more and more usage of composite materials uh further than to that why you need to learn okay so increase temperature capability of composite materials uh, new jet engines so i told that already supersonic transport i explained on that so especially for the engines used in supersonic transport or the energy uh, generation there or for the outer surface where high temperature capability needed so we can use this uh, uh, the high end composite materials okay so there again you have lot of scope to learn do r and d all those things okay then no last but not the least intellectual property and patents okay so when you become a composite engineer or composite person so you can start thinking on coming up with a lot of uh, patents or new ideas innovations thereby you generate uh, intellectual property uh, and um, uh, patents and, and asset okay so this all some of the uh, least uh, or points i highlight here uh, why you need to learn more on composites and what is the need and what benefit it will it will give to you okay to conclude again i covered aspects of composite materials and we started with the introduction to engineering met engineering materials and difference between composites and uh, alloys and what all different types of composites what is a composite what are all the industry sectors it's being used what is new in composites what is its growth market all we saw and why one should learn uh, on composites okay so a wide variety of opportunities in front of you and what are all the job opportunities what are all the designations you can get when you working in composites okay and and uh, what what uh, benefit advantages it can bring you to you uh, all that we saw okay we saw we we learned in the last 40 minutes or so i would like to conclude this uh, presentation webinar with this short story okay so like it gives many many insight okay so there were three people uh, uh, building a temple okay so three workers and all three are uh, coming to the work morning 8 o'clock going in the night uh, evening 6 o'clock and everybody paid equal amount of money for their uh, work every day okay but what happens when somebody walk, walking by they ask the first person what are you doing here he says no i am a laborer i am experienced in construction i am building something here i come every day morning 8 o'clock go in the evening 6 o'clock and i get paid this much amount uh, daily i am happy so then that person goes to the next person next worker and asks what are you doing uh, i am an expert in building uh, buildings and i come here daily morning 8 o'clock and go in the evening 6 o'clock i get a, a good amount of money for doing this duty i am building something uh, great looks like uh, but i i am not bothered about that because i come i do my duty and go whatever instruction given to me i do and go okay then the same per then the person goes to the third person the third worker and asks him what are you doing then that third person says uh, see boss i am doing something great here i am building a temple okay i am building something which is great and it going to last for 1000 or 100 1000 years and daily lakhs of people will be coming here and worshiping here and they will get their peace of mind and i am happy for that i am doing a great work but anyway end of the day i get paid for that okay see the three different perspective of a same job okay how that third third person enjoying that work okay so that's why we say do what you love 
love what you do okay both has to have uh, go hand in hand you can't get everything you uh, love to do okay but you start loving what you do then you get a peace of mind you get cherished there be it learning be it doing your work be it your personal life so you you do whatever you do in with a great passion that is going to give you higher uh, yield higher laurels and it will give you a peace of mind and great satisfaction thank you all for attending today's webinar 